Hey Sugar Bros fans, welcome back to the channel for episode 17 of Sugar Bites. My name's Dave, as you know, and in this episode I wanted to look at Keisha's solo career and the demos that were released sort of between 2009 and 2011. Um, before we jump into that, I just wanted to take a quick opportunity to apologise for the delay in this upload. I had planned to get it done over the weekend, but there were some issues that came in the way and prevented me from doing that. So I do apologise for the delay. And just to explain, there will be a couple of videos that do follow in quick succession after this one because of that delay. Um, so sorry for going on overload again, but uh, I do hope you enjoy the videos. Not only is it important for me to do this video as a fan, a huge, huge fan of Keisha from day one, but also I have looked at Mutya and Siobhan's debut albums uh, in other episodes of Sugar Bites. So it's only the right thing to do as well to acknowledge the work that Keisha did do uh, towards her solo career before she rejoined the Sugar Babes with Mutya and Siobhan. So I do tend to think that we were absolutely deprived of something here that, that would have been incredible. I have no doubt about that at all. Keisha set out to work on her debut solo album after she was brutally ousted from the Sugar Babes back in 2009 and into 2010. After what I can only imagine was a horrible period of shock, confusion and disbelief, Keisha said herself that she was going to take time with the album and that she wanted to produce music that she loves instead of rushing into things. I really admire this approach. To me, Keisha's always seemed like someone who's worked extremely hard to make sure the Sugar Babes had that perfect sound, and clearly she wanted her own debut solo outing to be just as perfect. So various demos appeared online through this time and have done so since. One of her most popular solo demos was Fearless, which you can listen to here on YouTube, and it's got a stunning still video as well. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description. It's something that shines through from Keisha every time she performs for me, and that's her ability to build you up when you listen to her music. You feel an inner strength that's inspirational, and the only sort of like recent example I can give of that powerhouse sort of uh, presence that she has on stage is when she performs Stronger throughout the summer shows and obviously the headline tour. Uh, obviously, I mean, she was incredible throughout, but in particular on that song, uh, I remember specifically at York, and I honestly had goosebumps all over my body, and it's how I feel about Fearless as well. She has a unique way of inspiring me to be stronger in tough times with her voice and the quality in her performance. I believe everything that she sings. And speaking of those amazing performances, in July 2011, Keisha performed at Jacques... Jacques? 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 I don't know how to say that, Jack Townhouse in London, which was her first solo live performance after leaving the Sugar Babes. You can and probably will more than likely have already seen that these performances are available here on YouTube, but again, I'll leave links in the description if you haven't seen them or just fancy a rewatch. But I really just wanted to take the opportunity to highlight that Keisha looks so incredibly confident and comfortable on stage. I know that goes without saying because of her time in the Sugar Babes, but this must have been a huge transition, you know, going from that that comfort, I guess, and security of having your your bandmates on stage with you to to suddenly being solo. And I think it just goes to further highlight how good her material was and how much we actually missed out when it wasn't released. Obviously, our dreams came true when Mutti, Keisha and Siobhan reunited, but I still feel like this is one of those lost treasures that will never be unearthed. I kind of picture Keisha sat on top of a huge vault of mind-blowing songs, sort of knowing that they'll never be shared with us, more than likely anyway. I really think it's such a shame that the material didn't get the release and that, that Keisha obviously didn't get the recognition that she deserved for the amazing body of work that she'd created over that time. I think the one saving grace is obviously that she rejoined with Mutya and Siobhan. And combined with those two, you know, the, the trio as a whole, that's when you get this sort of otherworldly magic that occurs, in my opinion. Fortunately, she continues to bless us with her talent. And I, as a fan, I'm so, so grateful for that. I know most of you have seen that Keisha's recently posted a video to her channel documenting her summer and the headline tour. The insights that you get from her videos as a fan, for me, are unlike anything else. It's the kind of stuff I live for, so please, please make sure to check out our channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, I'd really love to know your thoughts about Keisha's solo work from 2009 to 2011. What was your favourite song or performance from the era? What did you think of her cover of Girls Just Want to Have Fun as well? I personally loved it. She can do no wrong for me, but I'd be really interested to know your guys' take on this. Please let me know down in the comments. I kind of feel like I've not been able to do this justice really in the sense that 
Keisha's solo work, there's there's probably way more to it than we realise and understand. Like I say, I do envisage her sitting on that, that big vault somewhere full of excellent, phenomenal material. But we obviously haven't heard that stuff, so I can only kind of go on the demos that, that we've seen online on here on YouTube. But based on that, we were clearly deprived of something that was going to be amazing. Anything that, that Keisha touches for me kind of turns to gold. Um, she obviously has this phenomenal way with words and then and then that's backed up by her amazing vocal ability. So either way to me, it would have been a phenomenal album. And I will kind of always have that question in my mind, that sort of what if. As mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I have got a couple more videos that will be coming shortly. One of which will contain some exclusive information about a classic Sugar Babe song. So please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the little notification bell so that you're notified of my future videos. And I will look forward to catching up with you guys down in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching.